the postman has just arrived with a new camera the Sony ZV-1 or in America ZV-1 so let's open the box and see what we get so what we've done is we've gone for the combination because it worked out quite a lot cheaper so not only do we get the camera we get the GPVP2 TBT which is such a mouthful and what a silly name anyway it's just the shooting grip so that's what we're going to call that the shooting grip And here we have it, the ZV or ZV1. Let's open up the box and see what we get inside. We get a little pamphlet telling us we can have an extended warranty, so that's quite handy. And then again, we need some form of sharpness because there's a little bit of sealing on it. So let's open that up. A load of terms and conditions. A thing to register your product, but who actually uses that these days? Everything's done online. A reference guide, which might come in handy. Some warranty information. And some promotional items telling us the other things that we can buy from Sony. And then we get a book which tells us how to operate the camera. Obviously, as with most people, we're going to throw that away and not bother to read it. We open the box and here it is. Here's the camera. There we go. Well, it's a tiny little thing, isn't it? What we also get is a little windshield for the microphone. The ZV-1 has got a built-in microphone which works, I believe, extremely well. But you can take off this little protector for the hot shoe, put in your windshield and there you go. So that's quite handy. There's a USB cable, USB-C. A lot of people complain and say, well, it should be, sorry, this is mini USB, not USB-C. And people have complained and said, everything should be USB-C now. And I agree with that, but it's hardly the end of the world just means you have to fumble around with more cables. And then there's the battery. And I believe, although we'll do a little test a bit later on, that the battery life is pretty poor. So we're probably going to need some more of those. I so say we're going to do some testing later on. I seem to have the most unbelievable control over the weather. If I order a new camera, it will be raining that day, every time. Right, let's have a look at the shooting grip. So, inside here, there's plenty of bubble wrap. And there's our little grip. Now you can get these cheaper on Amazon. When I say cheaper, you can get aftermarket versions and they are uh, a little bit cheaper than this. I don't know how well they work but 
this one came as part of a deal with the camera so it worked out the best option Okay, and there's a little leaflet telling you how to set it up. I want another one. It looks like we get leaflets in lots of different languages. And a pouch, which is quite nice. And then a battery. It uses a sort of a watch type battery which I would imagine would last a long time. It uh, connects to the camera via Bluetooth, which is why it needs a battery. So there we have it, the shooting grip and the ZV-1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to charge up all of the batteries and so on, and then we're going to see if we can put it all together and get it to work. So, with the battery fully charged, we can start the setup. One of the things I really like about the ZV-1 is the fact that it's got these little doors here. So you don't have to have a whole big flap open if you just want to plug in the USB or the microphone. So that's a nice little feature. Switch it on. First thing it'll ask you is, what language do you speak? we speak English then it's going to ask you to set the area so you have to tell it whereabouts you are and it's already defaulted to London so we'll take that now we want to try and attach our little Bluetooth grip so we need to insert the battery into that and you've got these two little clips. It's a little bit fiddly, but you've got to pull the first one across and then the second one down and then the battery cover comes off. And put the battery in there and that's all ready to go. It can be linked without actually having to attach it to the camera. So the first thing we need to do is go to the menu and then we need to find the setting for network so that's the third menu along network then we need to go down to Bluetooth settings Bluetooth function we need to change that to on and then we need to go to pairing which is underneath the Bluetooth function on select pairing now to set this into pairing mode you need to hold the photo button and the telephoto button together and then it'll tell you on the camera that it's connected to the device so you select OK and it tells you that it's paired so now that we've paired the remote grip with the camera you might find that it still doesn't work and uh, you think that there's something wrong with it. If you look in your pairing, it'll tell you that it has been paired with the grip, but you also need to look on the menu for the Bluetooth remote control and switch that on. If that's not switched on, it won't work. Well, with all that set up, I think we need to go out and do some video with the new ZV ZV1 and see what it looks like. Well, it does say on the box that this camera is made for vlogging. It tells you quite clearly. So I think what they're trying to say is if you bought this camera and you're not going to vlog, you better take it back straight away. You bought the wrong camera. So, being as it's made for vlogging, let's go and vlog. We're going to Walk the walk and talk the talk. Well, talk rubbish, basically. Change there, then. So, I'm using the camera's built-in microphone. And it's got this little dead cat on it, which uh, 
It's definitely something that should be on there all the time. There's people who do tests without it. And I really don't understand why, because there's never a time when you're going to be without having some sort of wind noise. And today, because we're walking along the seaside, we've literally got a full-on gale. I'm filming using S-Log at the moment, so uh, I'm not that good at colour grading. So what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to switch over to the uh, intelligent auto mode. Give the camera a fair chance of being able to show you what it can do. So what we've done now is we've changed over to intelligent auto, whatever that means. Theoretically the camera should intelligently work out what the scene is like and it should set up all of the exposure and everything else accordingly also changed over to the Rode Video Micro which is an incredible microphone, a real bargain. It's so cost effective and they really do produce good results. So we're on our way to go and get ourselves a cup of coffee and uh, then we're going to go back and have a look at some of the footage and see how well the see I never know whether to say ZV-1 or ZV-1. I suppose it depends where you're watching. Anyway, we'll go back, have a look at some of the footage, see what the results look like.